On my road trip to Southern West Virginia, I ended up shopping at a couple of antique malls and I found some comics. Stay tuned to find out what I found. Welcome back comic book fans. This is Rusty again with Collector Auctions and today I'm going to show you a little bit of my road trip from the previous week where I went down to Southern West Virginia. I ended up hitting a couple of antique malls at the beginning of the trip in Hagerstown, Maryland, and I ended up finding some comics. So we'll go over the books that I found and we'll talk about those malls a little bit. But before we begin, hit that like button, slap the subscribe, and definitely hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on great shows like this each and every week. I put out content on Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m., so I hope you will join me each week for both episodes. And be sure to join me on Instagram and Facebook with the same name, Collector Auctions. If you ever see any books on this channel that you like, you can reach out to me there, especially on Instagram where I do a lot of postings. Check out my postings on there where I give special deals on a lot of the comics that I sell. I do sell on eBay, but you can get better deals on Instagram because I don't have those high eBay fees. But check me out in both places. I've got links in the description below. So I hope you guys will check that out. And if you find anything, just let me know. So. Let's get into the books and let's talk about this road trip. All right, so last weekend, I ended up going on a road trip down to my place in southern West Virginia. And along the way, I ended up stopping in Hagerstone, Maryland, where there were two different little antique malls. Now, I didn't know that there were two there. In fact, I wasn't sure what I was going to find. I was actually going to go visit Timber Grove Traders. They sell a lot of comic books, and I'd seen their postings on Facebook. Now, I wasn't sure that they were in an antique mall or had a shop, but... When I got there, it definitely was an antique mall, and they were located at Beaver Creek Antiques in Hagerstown, Maryland. So I went in, and I'm going to end up, I'm going to show you some footage here. So we'll come back, and we'll get back to the books that I got, but I'll show you some of the footage from the store, and you'll see the Timber Grove, Anti excuse me, Timber Grove Traders booth set up, and you'll see a lot of the books that they've got there. And then I'll go over, after we're done everything, I'll go over the books that I picked up there. But sit back, enjoy a little bit of the footage from this antique mall, and then we'll get into the books.
Okay, so I hope you ended up enjoying the footage from the mall. I didn't take a lot there because when I'm on these road trips, I don't have a lot of time. And when I go to my place in West Virginia, it's usually about a five hour trip. So any stops I make like this that I spend any time at, it takes ends up adding to the trip it makes the trip a lot longer so i went in i found timber grove i did a little bit of footage of some of the other things so you could see what else i found there and ended up finding some really good books in here and i found it was nice high quality books they had a lot of stuff in those short boxes especially that you saw in the case i had to go to the front and talk to the shop owner and they came back with a key and they stood there with me as I got through thumb through the books. It was a little disconcerting having to have someone stand there over top of you like you're at high school or junior high or something have somebody watch over you. But I get it. These are the expensive books. You can't just put them out there and let people damage them or steal them or anything. So after I found the counter at Timber Grove Traders, I ended up going through everything that was not in the case. And like I said, I got the shop owner. He came over, opened up the case, and I went through every one of those short bins. And there was a lot of good books in there, but I was also looking for condition. I will, if I'm not finding one of the books that's definitely on my top to get books, I look for other books, especially older books that are in high quality. And I ended up finding a couple, and let me just show you what I've got here. I ended up picking up a copy of the Flintstones number one. This is from Charlton Comics. This is from 1970. And this book, usually these Charltons I find are usually in rough condition. This was a really nice condition book. And after I got it, I knew that being in the condition it was, it was going to actually be fairly high grade. Turns out there's only 19 on the census graded, the highest being a 9.6, and the last recorded value I could find on that was back in 19, what, excuse me, 2018, not 19, 2018 for $355. So there really hasn't been any higher grades, and there hasn't been many sales of this book, but it's the first issue from Charlton Comics in this, and I thought, okay, this is a really nice book. I bought it because of the condition, mostly. So we'll take a chance on this, and we'll hopefully get this, we'll get this clean and pressed here at the shop, and we'll get it out to CGC at some point. All right, so the second book I ended up picking up at Timber Grove Traders was this one right here. It's Wendy, the Good Little Witch. 55 and this is not a key obviously these these are kids books this is from harvey comics july 1969 and again i bought this on the condition the age and the condition of this book and what a great great condition this is this is really nice i always find these older books especially from the silver age where you've got this really pale blue you see this i think you see this a lot on the, some of those early spider-mans those blues end up looking kind of dirty over time but this is really a really nice book and there's only nine graded on the census now i didn't sit there with the shop owner standing over me and pulling out the phone to check grades but as we were talking he says a lot of people will do that they'll pull the book they'll pull the phones out and have their apps up and they'll be checking grades and conditions and things like that and I know that most, of the, in a lot of these books like this, I mean, there's not a high demand, but there is a nice premium if you can get these in a super high grade, especially with the age, no matter what the book is usually. And Wendy was a very popular character in the late 60s, early 70s. I grew up when reading Casper and Wendy and Richie Rich and Donald Ducks and all these books from that era. And you know, I never had this book, but these are always great kids' stories, and you learn how to read reading these books, and they always had a pretty decent message and everything. Highest grade I've found on this right here, out of those nine graded, was a 9.6. Hasn't been a sale on that since 2010, and it was only $53. So we're 13 years later. It's that price and that grade and everything at this point is kind of irrelevant. We you know, we have no modern data on this. But again, I bought it on condition. I thought it was a nice book. I added it to the PC. So there you go. So that's what I found at Timber Grove Traders. And as I said, I walked around that mall and I ended up finding some other comics there and nothing that graded out. I think you saw a box of Kameko books, Grendel, Justice Machine, um, Mage. Was Mage in there? I don't know. But 
it was nothing that really jumped out, nothing else. There was a lot of places where they had a few comic books that were just dog-eared and beaten to death. And what I was finding real quick is when you want to go to an antique mall and you want good quality comics, you're going to find them locked up in the case because that's you got to protect them. You can't have people just thumbing through them all the time. Uh, too many kids will go through and just beat them up. I mean, like they were on the newsstand, right? So I was learning real quick to kind of keep an eye out on for cases that were locked up and with boxes or anything else in there. And as I said, I found a few other comics. I didn't find a lot of other things, but ended up getting these. And then as I'm leaving, the shop owner said, I said, yeah, I found some comics that this one seller in the back of their store, they had a lot of books. And he said, he said, yeah, he's actually got another setup in the mall next to us. And I'm just like, mall next to us? Oh, okay. So I'll go outside, and it turns out right next door is another antique mall. Now, this one was called Antique Crossroads. And literally, you could just, they have a path between the two. Literally, I just walked over, and I went in. And I didn't shoot a lot of footage in there, because, again, I'm on this long trip. I was kind of speed walking at this point, looking for the books and see what I could find. And I found actually more books and more sellers at that shop, that antique mall. And I ended up finding a few good things there. And all from one dealer, they had some other cases there and I couldn't find anything in those cases from this one dealer. But there was another who ended up having a lot of old Dale Gold Key Walt Disney books and a lot of them were out in the open so I got to thumb through a lot of them and then there were some in the case that I had to ask the their shop owner to come over and open that case up and we did, went through the whole same thing they sat there and waited for me to go through the books and then I put everything back that I didn't want and they locked the case up and then we went up to the counter because I was basically finished at that point but let me show you what I got at the other antique mall this is antique crossroads and I can't even tell you what sellers I ended up buying from at this point but I ended up buying some nice Walt Disney comics and stories. This one right here, let's see, this is number 236. 236 is from 1960, only 13 graded on the census. And again, every one of these books I got are really nice and high grade, pressable defects, not a lot of spine ticks, hardly at all. And I just thought, okay, I think these were eight bucks a piece. So... Even if I don't get them graded, they're really nice books to have in the PC. And I'm definitely going to get them in the shop and press and try to get them in better condition with the idea of grading them at some point. The highest grade I found on this was a 9.6 from 1979, excuse me, 2009. And it went for $179. Again, that data is so old, it's irrelevant at this point. But it gives me an idea that 9.6 can exist. This is actually a really nice book. I don't know if I can get it up to that grade, but we'll see what we can do with it. The next one I ended up was issue 213. 213 is from May of 1958. Only eight are graded on the census. And again, another high of only 9.6, $167 from 2010. Again, irrelevant again at this point. I ended up getting 224. And it's got a little writing over here in pencil, it looks like. So I'm going to have to be real careful about seeing if I can get that off of there or diminish it a little bit. But this, an, other than that, it's in really nice shape. This book right here ends up, this one actually had some surprising value. It, there is a 9.8, I think maybe two out there on the census. 14 have been graded. 2009, 9.8, the last one that I could find went for $388. Now, that actually tells me something that down the road, I mean, we're all these years later, that if you could get 9.8 on that now, it's you're probably talking five, maybe $600. 9.6 went at, just sold actually, here a few days ago in February, and it went for $288. So this is, has a lot more significant information that you can deal with. I'm going to try to get that pencil off of there, and we'll see if we can get this grade up. I don't think we're going to grade out to 9.8, but I'm always hoping that these books like this, that I've got a good eye when I'm out in the road like this, that maybe I can get those into those 9.2s to maybe 9.6s. Who knows? All right, two more that I picked up there was Walt Disney 
Comics and Stories. This is 267. 267 is November 1962. Only three graded on the census. Um, interesting, we're got, I mean, at this point, we're over into Gold Key. This most recent I found on this goes all the way back to 2008 on Heritage Auctions at a 9.6 for only $192. And I picked up the issue prior to that, 266, October 1962. All these books really, really nice shape. This one here, again, only this one only had six on the census. The high that I found on that was from July 2018 on Heritage Auctions as well. Actually, the one before that, I think I said 2008, it's 2018. Both of these went in the same auction back to back. And this one actually went for the same price, $192. Uh, my guess, my guess is probably the same person who bought both of these because these were probably not these but the ones that went on heritage were probably file copies judging by the exact time that these went on there but really nice books these are all fun books to have and yes they're not marvel they're not dc but they've got some great value if you can get them in high grade and they're just fun to add to the pc and it makes collecting fun collect what you want guys see the things that make make you happy and things that you're interested in so don't tell anybody that this is silly to buy these kind of books buy what you want collect what you want but the only other thing i ended up picking up at this second mall was this right here and i'm also very into sports cards and memorabilia and i ended up picking this up now this right here let me put the books down real quick this right here is a full set actually you know what let me take it out of the bag you can see it a little bit better. It's a set of four sets of baseball cards, uncut sheets. This is from 1981. Crown Gasoline in 1981 put out a set of Oriole, Baltimore Oriole baseball cards of every player who ever played at Memorial Stadium. 1991 was when the last year the Orioles were going to play at Memorial before they moved into their current home at Candom Yards. And th well, this is a great set. I remember collecting these, and I, I still have all these. And I busted out the four sets. They're alphabetical. It's every player who ever played. And I've spent years since about 1991 when they came out going to Oriole games and collecting. Whenever I'd run into an Oriole I didn't have a card on, I'd usually, I'd have these. I'd find old Orioles at shows at some of the fan fests at, at, down in Baltimore with the Orioles. You can find a lot of old Orioles in this area. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're getting that many years later now and m many have passed away. But I've had a good time taking these sheets and still getting players on here i think i still need to get cal ripkin but i've got billy ripkin on there and i've got brooks robinson on here and there are many of the orioles that you'll find that still live in this area i've got a lot of them on there and it's just a fun way to collect i'm not it's not a super um, hobby where i'm addicted to i have to get this but it's one of those that it's always good to have on hand when i would go to some of these events and, and get some of these former orioles fun stuff fun stuff but Anyway, that's it. That's the last thing I picked up at this antique mall. This was Antique Crossroads that I picked this up. All right, guys, that's it. That's the last of the books and the last of the cards that I got at these two antique malls on my road trip down to southern West Virginia. I encourage you guys to stop off at Beaver Creek Antiques and the Antique, excuse me, Antique Crossroads. They're in Hagerstown, Maryland. You can find them on the internet. And definitely check out Timber Grove Traders there. They do have some good books. They had some really nice books you saw in the video. Check them out. I give them definitely give them a thumbs up. They've got some good stuff there. So hope you get it, guys. Get a chance to stop there. But that's it. Do me a favor. Tell me what you think about these books, but leave me a comment in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you think of these books and are these books that you collect and do you put these into your PC? But that's it. I'm out of here. Join me for the next episode where I go over some just some regular books I've been picking up from Heritage Auctions, eBay, whatnot, things like that. Just some normal comic book hauls from some various different sources. I got some great books. I encourage you guys to join me for the next episode. 
I've enjoyed this today. I hope you enjoyed this too. And if you get a chance, check out my previous episode where I go over a comic book shop that I stopped at in Roanoke, Virginia on this same trip where I stopped off in Hagerstown. On the way back, I stopped off at this shop in Roanoke, Virginia, actually in Salem, Virginia, where a previous YouTuber had gotten kicked out of. And you can check out that episode and you'll see my experience at this shop and how it might have differed from the other YouTuber. But until then, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. And remember, every comic has a story.